It's the seconds between 7.29 and 7.30 when I'm holding my breath and waiting to hit that little start button to make these things happen that like all the oxygen leaves my body. I get completely terrified, freaked out, panicked, and, 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 and sit there waiting to hit the button. So be proud of me. I hit the button tonight. Hey, Peg. How you doing? So... I was gonna write or read actually something else tonight, but I realized that I've hit a spate of articles from like 2012, 2013, 2014 that um, talk about my marriage and uh, my life and uh, they were crushing my soul. I tried to read them <laughs> and mm -mm, no, no. So the only way to really keep moving forward is I'm gonna have to start producing new material. So here we are. And what better inspiration for a fable that just coming at you tonight than the fact that we are now just about, we got one week before hurricane season officially starts. Although if you look out your windows here in Virginia, um, it seems like uh, somebody didn't get the memo because we went from what 85 89 degrees and sunny yesterday to a 25 degree temperature drop overcast and looking like uh, we're in a horror film out there so it's time and tonight's fable is it's got a little bit of a uh, if you don't know who Billie Eilish is you're gonna have to just go go to YouTube something look up the song ocean eyes because that that inspired the title if nothing else to the song so it's ocean eyes the hurricanes story because we need to relate to hurricanes now because i find not just as a parent because my guys are pretty much grown now um i find that sometimes anthropomorphizing something that's really scary and destructive uh can help all of us get through it just a little bit better so Oh, and we do bring back a uh, character from an earlier fable. So if you remember me reading The Emerald Wave, that's what this one's about. If not, I will drop the link into the comments so you can go back and watch. No, cried the littlest wave in the ocean as ripples fleeing a new hurricane raced over it. Fear, 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 whispered the ripples as they swept past. Upon reaching the shore, the sand shifted into frightening, jagged patterns. I will not take part, cried the littlest wave to its three masters, the wind, the moon, and the sky. You should stop this. The littlest wave knew the perils of being turned into a destructive force. It had once wished to be an emerald wave, a wave of power. An emerald wave is one so tall that the sun shines through it, casting a terrifying, sickly green light on those it is about to crush beneath its weight. The three masters had granted its wish and it had narrowly escaped losing control and destroying the little island it now protected. We're all forces of nature, bellowed the wind, which had begun to rise. This is how it has always been. No element can change it. Make your peace. Say your farewells. Though it was still daylight, the sky, which held the moon, darkened, making the ghost of the moon appear. Nothing could stop the storm once it had begun to boil up from the sea, for it was born of the deepest rage. For months, perhaps years, the fury built beneath the surface, and when just the right combination of elements came together, that rage catapulted to the surface, seized control of the other elements and swept the face of the earth. Not the water from which it was made, nor the wind by which it was driven could reason with it. For once the killer storm was in motion, it seemed that it became an entirely new temporary element that was beyond the control of its component parts. The sky called down to the littlest wave. Every droplet in the world knows the story of how someday 
It might become a part of a greater, more powerful force for either good or destruction. It could bring life to crops and creatures or smite them into oblivion. Or the littlest wave, of course, it knew that the water is part of every season. While each season carries some risk of being swept up into a storm, water fears the spinning storms, the most tornadoes, hurricanes, cyclones, and typhoons. Water counts itself lucky to be drawn up into a short-lived destroyer such as a tornado or a water spout. Although they do find it ironic that tornadoes form not from hate, but from a short-lived, giddy love affair that takes place in the hearts of thunderstorms. When warm, moist air and cool, dry air meet, become giddy and unstable in their powerful attraction. They're off balance, easily tilted into a spin when the air currents that bind them reach too quickly for the heavens. The updraft tilts and rotates the air from horizontal to vertical, and they dance recklessly across the land. Their whirling dervish of a dance devastates all it touches. Depending on the tune that the wind blows, the tornado may hop from place to place, sparing some, or sweep like the long skirt of a dancer across the land. Hurricanes, so-called in the Northern Hemisphere, and cyclones and typhoons, so named in the Southern, all have three things in common. They're all angry, deadly, and they spin like a mad thing. All of these things are like engines that require warm, moist air and wind as fuel. Still, it is blind rage that drives them. Just as the wave was lost in thought, a chunk of hail thundered down from the sky with a note written on its icy surface. Remember the blind eye, it read. There are none so blind as those who won't see. The littlest waves struggled to remember that part of the old story. The winds blow faster and begin twisting and turning around to form an eye, a, a calm center of the storm that never closes or blinks. The massive eye passes over all that it has devastated, but ignores it and keeps moving. The trade winds push the hurricane and the low air pressures also cause a huge mound of the ocean water to pile up near the eye of the hurricane. This creates a new monster, a storm surge that engulfs the land. The wave knew what it must do. It must travel to the center of the storm and force the eye to see. As the wave got closer to the massive storm that was forming, it began to call to the trade winds for help. Take me in, the wave cried. Lift me up higher. I must become a second eye. Now the trade winds were shocked to the point of standing still. The entire storm wavered and stalled as he considered this highly unusual request. There has never been a hurricane with two eyes, it sang. It cannot be done. Into the silence came the roar of the hurricane itself. Who holds me here? It demanded. Speak. The littlest wave churned. I, who was once the emerald wave, have come to plead with you to stop this madness and spare the land. <laughs> <laughs> you, you may have once been the emerald wave, laughed the storm nastily. Now you are nothing. You have no power that I can see. You have no consequence, but hmm, you may still be of use. The storm turned to the trade winds, wrapping them in its vice-like grip and twisting them to its will. The trade winds began to tug and pull and draw the littlest wave and all of the water around it up and up to meet the storm. I will use you first to wipe them all out. The storm laughed. Welcome to the surge. 
Water all around began to vaporize as it cooled. It became massive clouds that towered above the sea. The wind did its part to drive the clouds into a whip-like spiral that rolled across the land like a deadly wheel of fortune. The sky could no longer see the littlest wave, but it sent down yet another chunk of hail as its messenger. The moon is always in the sky, it read. Open your emerald eye. The littlest wave was fighting the spin and the lift of the storm as it read the note and it tried to make sense of it. It felt itself being pulled up towards the blind eye of the hurricane and it suddenly, it suddenly understood what it was meant to do. It remembered the way that it felt to be pulled by the moon and driven by the wind rising into the emerald wave. One moment, the hurricane was in a blind rage sweeping over the outer islands and the next, it could see everything beneath it illuminated in a clear sickly green light. The power of the emerald wave had come back at the command of the littlest wave who could now control it. A second eye formed and with it the hurricane could not look away from what it had done. Suddenly it saw with perfect clarity the errors of its way. It saw homes, schools, businesses all devastated, families lost, children weeping. Now the hurricane stalled once more. While it still had the wind and warm water it needed, its entire supply of rage had evaporated. The storm fell apart from grief, leaving only the emerald wave hovering at the shoreline of the little island that it loved and protected. All of the old power of the emerald wave still held that little wave in place, but because it was created in a selfless act of love, the littlest wave that still lived deep inside it was able to give one final graceful pirouette sending a gentle shower across the sand before it asked the moon to pull it back out to sea. One last hailstorm pelted what was left of the hurricane as it retreated into the sky. Each and every hailstone bore this message. We will always have our eyes on you. And this is why hurricanes weaken when they hit the land. The memory of water runs deep, and it knows the moon and the sky are always watching. But now it also understands that little waves can make big waves when they have something special that they need to protect. Yeah, that's us. We're the little waves. We can make the big waves when we have something to protect and nobody sees us coming. No, sir. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you're all here with me tonight and I hope that we all stay safe from COVID-19 and the incoming hurricane season. Stay safe, stay strong, look out for each other. Hail and farewell for tonight.